everybody. Welcome back to the latest edition of Terrace Talk. Of course, uh, a huge game for Norwich this weekend again. Um, the playoffs is almost there. They can almost smell it uh, back at Carrow Road. I'm sure all of the fans are going to be right up for this one. Um, but they're going to face a difficult test. Of course, a very informed side heading to Carrow Road, and that is Bristol City. With that, delighted to be joined by Annie. Um, Annie, it's been a, a pretty good week, a few weeks, I suppose, for Bristol City. One defeat in the last seven games, victories over the likes of Leicester, Swansea, Plymouth, that really good win against Blackburn 5 0. One of the form sides in the division. What's the mood like, I suppose, around Ashton Gate at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Um, I'd, I'd say we're probably one of the best we've been under Manning so far. We're putting some consistent performances together. We're playing quite well and generally looking a bit more of a solid side and uh, as you mentioned that five goal victory against Blackburn um obviously when you score five goals it's it's impressive all the time but especially for us goal scoring is a bit of a problem to, so to score five goals against a side who at that point um you know really fighting for their lives really felt like it was it's gonna it's gonna be a tough test to stick five past them felt really good and then yeah you mentioned the last the game um the Swansea game you know wasn't 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 pretty against Swansea, but I have to get the win. And since then, we've been on a pretty decent run of form. And I'd argue the the losses we've had in recent uh, in our recent form have been really tough games. You know, away at Ipswich, away at West Brom, really tough games, and not something you'd expect us to get anything from. Um, so yeah, I've been really happy with the with the form we're at, and um, yeah, generally happy with um, probably the one of the best kind of forms we could go into and you know playing a Norwich side at Carrow is always always going to be hard anyway so to go in I mean, go into it with a bit more momentum than we probably would have had a month ago yeah very good yeah we're expecting a difficult test of course um, you're currently 12th uh, mid-table finish looks like it's going to be on the cards how would you kind of assess the season more generally as a, as a whole happy with kind of a, a mid-table finish or maybe a twinge of disappointment you, you couldn't compete more towards the top six Bit of a mixed bag, I'd say. Probably, you know, with the kind of change in manager halfway through the season, it's always, it's always going to be a bit of a transitional period. At the moment, we have a squad, in my opinion, that's probably not quite good enough to make that kind of step to let this Liam Manning style of play. So, where we sit on that is is, is kind of subjective. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm fairly happy. I think if we win our home. Uh, next home game and get something at Stoke. I think we are um, third highest points tally since we've come back to the championship. And if you consider we've been in a couple of really tight playoff races, that's not bad, uh, not bad at all. So, um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with how things are going. If we can carry on the momentum to us back in the season, then I'm very happy with with how things are going. And yeah, it's just about for us uh, getting some momentum to the back end of the season and. Go into next season and pre-season, uh, giving Manning what he wants basically, and starting next season quite strongly. Yeah, you mentioned him a few times there. Liam Manning, of course, arrived early November. Bit of a mixed bag. He had a, a steady start, I suppose. Then maybe dipped a little bit around January. Didn't get a league win at all in that month. Felt maybe a little bit of pressure. Turned it back round, of course, as, as we've mentioned with recent form. Right man for the job. Definitely moving forwards. Have you kind of seen sort of signs of progress? Yeah, my, I, I'd say so. I think he is he is the right man. We we've we start at the start of his tenure. We start uh, we saw a kind of willingness to play a more possession based style of play. And obviously, on a Nigel Pearson side, you wouldn't have seen that to the same level. Um, we were still a decent footballing side, but just didn't have that attacking edge uh, at the start. It kind of felt pedestrian. It was very slow. It wasn't particularly good to watch. And then I think he him and Chris Hogg realised that this actually possibly not the best way to go about this current squad. So there's a quick kind of switch um, started at, started in that away fixture at Ipswich where we played really well um, and got done by 18 half minute uh, winner. I'm not, sorry, I have to wait at Ipswich too much. Um, but yeah, they kind of we kind of switched, switched to a more defensive approach and then that went 1-0 win over Swansea where really, really good defensively, but you you kind of rely on a set piece at home to a side who are coming into that game on poor form as well um in the table as well so yeah we've kind of had a switch uh since i'd say that ipswich game so it's, it's been an interesting journey so far um uh but i think my hope is going in if not to us back in the season definitely in pre-season getting his methodology across if he's not if he doesn't want to play this kind of 
defensive style of play that we'll probably see at Carroll Road as well, then just get into preseason, get his players, get his players in the summer transfer window, and then see what we can do um, after that. But yeah, I'm fairly pleased with how we're going. We're kind of going along at a nice pace. Uh, inconsistent, patchy, streaky, all the mid-table cliches you want to put on the side. Yeah, he's spoken a little bit there about his philosophies. We've kind of seen him switch between three at the back and sort of four at the back at different points. Um, how do you expect the Robins to set up at Carroll Road sort of in terms of a sort of formation and a style of, a style, a style of a, a play and an approach to the game? Yeah, so as, as I mentioned, we... I think, especially considering it's Norwich away, we'll probably set up in a more defensive manner. Um, so we'll probably set up. Um, I don't think it particularly matters what formation we'll go for. I think it will be a defensive, defensive um, mindset to the to the game plan, and it'll be quite direct. If, if probably, yeah. Um, the problem is we have so many injuries, especially at centre back. Um, so we're expecting Rob Dickey to be back uh, for this game. But against Huddersfield, we had no fits out in the backs at all. Um, so that was a massive problem. And that meant we had to change shape. Um, otherwise, we would have had two players at centre-back who not played centre-back. Uh, and that would have meant complete confusion. And we had to drop Mark Sykes, who is a right winger by trade. And his, his best position is at right wing. Um, up that other right-hand side, we had to push him back to the right wing back. Beverly Jig didn't really wasn't really what we what was working for us previously in a Blackburn, um, etc. So it wasn't really what we were doing well with. So I think Dicky will be back. I'm not sure about Zach Viner. Um, those two, by the way, have been crucial uh, to our defence being really good with fourth best defence in the league in terms of goal con goals conceded. So we're definitely not going to concede five six. Clip that out. Um, but yeah. I think it's important we get Rob Dickey back and then if that happens, hopefully we move to four at the back. And I think that's the best way to get... Because it, five at the back means a lot of different things. We have no centre-backs. Our best midfielder in Jason Knight, who's so effective in that deeper role, has to push forward. Um, Tommy Conway's been used to playing kind of one at the top and then he's had to have Scott Twine and Mimetti behind him. It's been a bit, just been a bit confusing as when we play in five at the back. It's fine against Leicester and Leeds and Southampton and you go and beat them in a defensive shape. That's fine. But you play you know, lesser sides, you don't want to do that, especially home to Huddersfield. Um, so if Dickie's back, I expect to fall at the back with Hayden Roberts and Pring, um, allowing Jason Knight to be a little bit more deeper. So yeah, I'd probably say fall at the back in a more defensive approach. Yeah, you've mentioned a few players there that may be a standout players for the Robins. If you had to pick one player for Norwich fans to look out for on Saturday, who would it be? Rob Dickey seems to have settled in very well. Jason Knight, I was impressed with in, in the reverse game. Um, Conway, we know, is, is a threat in terms of goals. He's got double figures in all competitions. So which one maybe would you sort of choose to, to look out for? Well, um, honestly, the, the, all of them brilliant players for us. Rob Dickey, obviously, defensively. So if I if you're looking for a player to watch out for for your question, I'd probably say an attacking player, wouldn't I? So I'd probably go with Anas Mometi. Um He's been really, really kind of, he's really improved uh, in the past few months under, well, since Liam Manning's come in, he's put a lot of trust in him, a lot of faith in him. And he's been playing kind of off the left, but also in a number 10 position, kind of inverted a little bit. Um, I think having Scott Twine with him has helped him as well. So yeah, I'd go with Mometi if he starts. I don't, I think he started, if I'm remembering rightly, against Huddersfield. So maybe considering we might move back to back four, maybe he comes in, maybe Jason Knight drops back a little bit deeper, uh, maybe one of Matty James, Joe Williams drops out. Um, so yeah, I'd go with Alice Mermetti. I think he's been a real threat. And he scored that brilliant goal against Leicester on his weaker left foot. So I think he's a kind of player where if he gets, a, if he get, if he gets past someone in the opening five minutes, he just takes on someone and gets past him. Um, He'll have a lot of confidence. He'll have a lot of momentum. He'll have a lot of self belief in himself. He thrives off it. And yeah, I, th I think he should be a player Norwich uh, should be looking out for. Yeah, you've mentioned the defensive record, very strong, fourth in the, you know, best in the division, as you, as you referenced. Um, if there's maybe a weakness in this side that, that Norwich could exploit, is there sort of an obvious area or a certain maybe player or position or sort of a general style there that maybe Norwich could, you know, exploit on Saturday? Well, our attack isn't <laughs> isn't very good. Um, I think it's nineteenth or seventeenth, one of those two, um, in the league, which is not uh, particularly particularly good. Um, I think I mentioned Mametti and I mentioned Twine. Those are new two number tens in particular. 
if Norwich managed to shut them out, we've basically got no attacking threat. Because, because I love I love Jason Knight, I love Joe Williams, love Matty James, love the good the good midfielders, but they're more of a defensive mindset. And Jason Knight has been deployed in a more attacking position, but he's not as effective in that in that role. So yeah, if Norwich managed to shut out uh, Mametti and Twine and stop Bristity progressing up the pitch by getting them on the ball in those little pockets of space in between the midfield and the centre backs, um, and then allowing Conway and Sykes, whoever it is, to get forward and make those runs. Um, and I know Norwich have got kind of how to put this without uh, offending anyone. Um, I've got slightly more experienced defence, so we can possibly get in behind them, but it will be tough. Um, so, yeah, um, if you shut them out, we've basically got no attacking threat because Sykes thrives on balls in, in the channels, and if you're, not, if you're not getting balls in the channels, he's basically ineffective. So if you stop Twine, Mameti, you've got control of the game. Um, another, uh, I'd say... Right back, possibly, uh, depending on who starts there, uh, Ross McCrory or George Stan. If it's George Stan, he's really good defensively. Uh, Ross McCrory, um, he's coming back from a horrible injury. Um, I'm not sure the exact, I'm not I'm not an expert on the medic side of things, so I'm not going to pretend like I know what it was, but it was something really terrible. It kept him, kept him out, it's kept him out since um, February time. So, yeah, um, good to have him back, but obviously he's getting up to match fitness and he's not played um, since signing from Aberdeen in the summer. So he's still kind of building up his fitness. So if he starts, then I'd know it'd be Borja Science when it, um, down that left-hand side. Um, so, yeah, that could be, with this with Science as a kind of trickery, might be, and um, McCrory has been caught out a few times. But if it's George Tanner, Tanner's much better, much better defensively, but doesn't offer that same threat going forward that McCrory might do. Um, so, yeah, we've got a couple of decisions to make, especially right back, probably in that formation, whether Dickey's, fully fit or not um and also on Dickey if he's not fully fit then there's no point really risking him I know it's Norwich away and we might get lose 2-3-0 but it doesn't really matter not doesn't, doesn't matter if we finish 12th or 11th or 13th it's, you know you know what I mean you know, you've been in this position yeah, yeah. Uh, it does don't risk your don't risk your, one of your best players just keep him keep him for next season so um yeah I'd I'd there are a few I'd say decisions for for Villa Manning to make yeah, third third time we've met this season, of course, the, the Carabao Cup game at Ashton Gate, 1-0 Norwich victory, um, the late Adam Eder winner in the reverse championship game. Are you expecting a sort of different game on Saturday generally? I mean, that kind of spell was when David Wagner was under immense pressure in December. Norwich needed a result that they got it that day. Of course, the, the league position is drastically different now, looking like they could sort of solidify their, their playoff place with a couple of victories. Um, yeah, what sort of, I suppose, threat do you see from Norwich on Saturday? Do you expect a different game? Um, petrified of Josh Sargent uh, and 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 Gabriel Sara. Um, although I did think he was a bit ineffective in that game at, at Ashton Gate, but I'm sure he was a play, not playing as much confidence. Um, but yeah, um, Adam Ede always t- typically tends to do well against us, so I'm glad he's not there anymore. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, it's just a very good, experienced Championship side, isn't it? And you've got kind of the S Housery and Ashley Barnes, and you've got the really good players and in, in uh, Josh Sargent and Gabriel Saron, Marcelino Nunez, you've got really good technical ability. Um yeah, that squad should be in the top six, in my opinion. That that is a very much a top six level squad. Um I'm expecting a different game to the one Ashton Gate. Uh yeah, I think Norwich are much better at home, aren't they? So uh have you is that, am I right in thinking you haven't lost since the turn of the year? Uh at, yeah. At Carabao? Last, last defeat at Cairo was early November against Blackburn. Yeah, eight straight victories uh, at home. So yeah, it's going to be a difficult test, I think, for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I anticipated that anyway. Um, yeah, that's obviously a concern. But l- look, um, just just f- f- from from our point of view, it's just about how we contain that. But it's going to be really difficult. We've got some. You've got some really good players. You've got to no denying that, and a couple of players who are too good for this division and I'm thinking Sarah and um Sargent in particular um and I'm thinking that Johnny Rowe came off the bench against yeah, Preston yeah, did, yeah, yeah so that's that's not fun either um so yeah you've got some really good players I'm no I don't need to tell you that you know that um and to be honest if you're competent you'll win this game comfortably 
Just yeah, with that, perfect. yeah, yeah, going to push you for a, a score prediction. I mean, Bristol City don't particularly have the greatest record against Norwich generally. I think it's just one victory in 14 games. The last Carrow win 2009, but these records are there to be broken. Annie, do you fancy uh, the Robins' chances on Saturday? No, <laughs> not with the um, kind of pressure on Norwich to go and uh, it, not pressure, but expectation and kind of what it means to you guys um, compared to what it means to us. I think we'll play. We'll play with a bit of freedom and we'll play with a bit of shackles off like we have been playing for a couple of weeks. But um, that might mean, you know, kind of carelessness and that might leave spaces for Norwich who will be alert and will be ready to pounce. And as you mentioned, Carol, we'll be up for this, you know, determined to determined to nail down that top, top six place. So for that reason, I'll go for a Norwich win. Um, yeah, I'll go 2-0. Two, two yeah, I see a, a similar theme. I think no, no, no Norwich fan is taking this game lightly. I saw, saw a few clips of your, your game against Ipswich and the Leicester victory and stuff. You know, we, I think most most fans are slightly wary of teams on the beach. They can often be dangerous. Uh, when they've got <laughs> not not much to play for as such. Um, just want to plug your YouTube channel. I know you've got a sort of a channel dedicated towards Bristol City content and a podcast, I believe. Yeah, well, you can find me on YouTube at Annie Harris there. So yeah, just literally British City stuff. Go to home games and stuff like that. You can check out my save vlogs and yeah, also do the eighteen eighteen ninety four podcast, which you can find on Spotify and, and YouTube as well. Again, uh, me and my co-host just talk about British City stuff and yeah, generally uh, talk about the ex players who are much better than us at the moment, uh, raving about them and uh, generally complaining about how crap we are most of the time. <laughs> There we go. We'll link all that down below. Of course, go check out Annie's stuff there. Looking forward to the game on Saturday. Should be a, a good game between two sides that will, of course, be hoping to, to pick up the result. You know, Bristol City will be looking to, to lay the foundations for next season, as Annie's outlined there in our chat. Um, Norwich, of course, hoping to to push into the top six and probably solidify with potentially a victory. I know, um, I think Coventry don't play this weekend due to the FA Cup and Hull, I think they've got a difficult uh, trip to Watford. So, you know, Norwich fans will be hoping results go their way. Um, thanks for joining us this evening and I'll see you in the next one.